Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house, Justin's house. I have an update for you on information objects. I want to talk about the proper use of information objects if you're following the CSDM. Now I have a video I released a couple months ago. I'll put a link to it up there on the up at the top. And I was basically making the case for, hey, if you haven't done the full maturity on CSDM yet and you're not ready, but you still need to know that a server has PII or PHI or some kind of employee data on it, um, that you can still associate that information object, which you can see here in the data model, with a server so that you have some way to track it, right? Well, I just finished some training on application portfolio management and I saw a really cool feature and I was like, well, I need to share this because I don't want you to think that that is the proper way to do it. It is something you can do, but the best way to do it is actually to associate it with a business application. And the particular way that I did it um, is not how you would do it on a business application. So let's go to ServiceNow. I'm at a list of business applications. So I went in here, I typed in business applications, and this one's pulling up under the application portfolio management menu. And if I open any one of these, we'll open ServiceNow Discovery, I get a business application form. We can see all the nice details there for that. And what I showed in my previous video was using the dependency builder right here to create a relationship between the ser a server in that video and an information object. And while that's good, it works, you got, you got that relationship established. If you're doing it on a business application, which is where ServiceNow recommends you do it, there is actually a related list down here on the bottom for information object attributes. And I want to show you something cool. When you use it this way, um, notice I'm going to get my, my head's kind of in the way. Uh, yeah, my head's totally in the way. So let me move my head over here. Notice I have an add, delete, and edit relationship buttons. So we've got some special UI actions. If I click add, look at this. So it's not just a relationship. I can say the information object, let's just go ahead and pick something random here. We'll do a, a customer bank account number. But look at this right here. I've got CRUD attributes that I can now associate with that information object. So maybe this business application, ServiceNow Discovery, isn't creating customer bank account numbers, but maybe it's reading bank account numbers and maybe not creating, updating, or deleting, but just reading. That's a big difference between just saying customer bank account numbers are associated with a server. Um, now we know for this particular application that it's doing a read operation versus a create or update or delete operation. So that's what I missed in my previous video. I wanted to make sure you saw that. So that still previous video is still good. If you just, if you haven't gone the CSDM route and you're not doing application portfolio management and you're not exactly sure what your business applications are and what your application services are, it's okay to do what I did in that last video. But if you can get to the point where you're getting mature on the common service data model and you start tracking these business applications, you'll want to do an effort to move your information objects from anything you associated with specific configuration items that you see there and move it to the business application. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in managing information objects or data types within their ServiceNow platform. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.